Observer Live, uh, Mike Sempervivi, also WrestlingObserver.com. Oh, am I excited for today? I'm sure for the next God only knows how long. Could have people outraged, outraged at me. But here we go. AW is looking to take another step towards pandemic normalcy, announcing Thursday they will begin selling tickets to their live shows starting with next Thursday's Dynamite. Dynamite will continue to be held at Daly's Place at 10 to 15% capacity. Venue's capacity listed at 5,500, putting that number, the number of tickets that will be sold, at an estimated 550 to 825. August 27, the kickoff to this new plan will be limited to 10% capacity. We'll go on sale Friday, Ticketmaster, awtix.com. If things go as planned, they will expand to 15% for future shows. It is assumed that with this move, Dynamite will be returning to weekly live programming instead of a live taped alternating schedule. To be in compliance with federal and state guidelines, tickets will be physically distanced and sold in seating pods that will be available in groups of two, three, four, and six around the venue. Fans will be required to wear face coverings that cover the nose and mouth and must distance from those not in their pod. Temperatures will be scanned. Fans who are showing any COVID-19 symptoms or have had close contact with someone uh, that is... Temperatures will be scanned and fans who are showing any COVID symptoms or have had close contact with someone that has are asked to not attend. I didn't write this article. It was actually a good sentence. I just read it poorly. Tickets will be mobile only, and only any merchandise, food, and drink will be done without cash. company has been giving away tickets to an estimated 100 to 150 fans through area partners in recent weeks, but this will be the first time that they have sold tickets to fans since the pandemic hit in March. So here we go, everybody. Am I appalled at this? No. Now, I have been consistent since day one about all of this, all right? Would I, if I were Tony Khan, would I sell 15% of the capacity in tickets to fans now? No, I would not. I wouldn't, okay? But if you are going to do this, and people are going to do this, then you must do your best to do it in a safe manner. And what they're doing is they're selling at a low capacity. They're spreading everybody who buys tickets in a pod out. You're not going to be near anybody else. You're going to be spread all over this building. And I have been consistent with this from day one. It is an open air outside arena. So yes, I'll get it out of the way right now. If WWE sees this and they decide, oh my God, we got to let we got to let 15% capacity into full sale for these NXT tickets. I'm not going to be happy with that. Why? Because full sale is a closed arena. It's not an open air arena. So yeah, I would be mad about that. If you want to be outraged about AW allowing 15% in, that is absolutely positively within your right. You must also be outraged about New Japan doing the exact same thing, and they're doing it also in closed air arenas. So, if you're going to do this, you have to do your best. And quite frankly, quite frankly, if they let somebody in to that building and that person ends up having COVID and they're spread throughout that open air arena, the chances of any of the wrestlers or any of the announcers contracting COVID is approximately zero. Quite frankly... I'm less concerned about them letting 10 to 15% of fans into an open-air building spread out than I am all of those wrestlers surrounding ringside that are right next to each other, and sometimes they do, and sometimes they don't wear masks. And those wrestlers are a lot closer to the announcers than any of these fans are going to be. So, again, would I do it? Would I do it? No, I would not do that in Florida right now. But if you are going to do 10 to 15% capacity, then they are doing it in the safest way possible, which is scanning everybody, requiring them to wear masks. You must stay in your pod with people that you're probably living with, and you're separated from every other pod throughout a 5,500-seat open-air building. 
That's it. I now await. I now await doom. But go ahead, Mike. I, the, you probably will get some responses to this on your Twitter machine and, and maybe even in the chat here, but we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, not getting as much attention this weekend. Game Changer Wrestling and Black Label Pro are running together again. They have been doing this on the regular uh, outside. Hey, Mike, we'll talk about this tomorrow because Paul Crockett is on the show tomorrow as a guest to talk about these shows this weekend. Well, that's in, you know, they, they've been doing outdoor shows in Atlantic City and in a park in Indianapolis now for quite some time. And there have been several indie shows running. I've seen good examples of this experiment with limited capacity and people spread out and sanitation being uh, demanded and masks demanded to be worn. I've seen good examples of it and I've seen bad examples of it. And. You know, this is the promotions are going to try to run and they're going to go where they can run. Uh, Black Label is back as is, is, is being tied into these weekends running shows and people are going to have to try to do what they can. But the only thing you can do is try to do your best, as you said, to be as careful as possible. And it's not just setting it up and selling tickets. It's about being vigilant as the show is going on, because as I've mentioned, I've seen IWA Mid-South. I've seen a couple of indie shows that have come from New Jersey that are on IWTV and on Fight TV that have not done a very good job of this. Once the show has started, people have streamed out and we're right next to each other and on top of each other. And it's like, you know, you throw your hands up and you go, well, what was the point of trying to do anything then? If you're not even going to attempt to police this and you're the ones putting the show on and you're the one responsible for it, then, you know, what's the point? You know, so they have to be vigilant about it. It seemed like AEW was being vigilant about it from the reports that we heard about up in the crowd when they had people in. WWE, you know, the other thing too, you know, the performance center being so much smaller than some of these other places as well, too. I mean, that's the other part with the capacity and the recycled air and all that other stuff. But again, if they're going to let people in, great. Just you have to be vigilant about it. And I, I, there's nothing I can really do about it. I'm not going to get upset about it. I can't fight about it. They are finding ways to run. They are finding ways to do what they need to do. So there's nothing I can really say about it. It's business going forward. The only thing I can point to is if you're going to let people into that environment, you better take care of them. And you better make sure that they take care of themselves and each other. And we'll see how they do with that. Got people in the chat outraged, as I figured. Are people going to do what they're supposed to? Well, listen. Exactly. Somebody we, police we have somebody. We have somebody in the chat, I believe right now. She's often in the chat. But she was one of the 150 people that was allowed into the building last week. And go ahead and ask her if everybody did what they were supposed to. The answer is yes, they all did what they were supposed to. They stayed in their pods, and they stayed away from each other. So... We already have, it's not like this hasn't happened before. It hasn't happened with 500 people, but it's happened with 150 to 180 people, and people did what they were asked to do. I've also had people outraged. Florida is not Japan. Florida is not Japan. You're right, Florida isn't Japan. You're absolutely right that Florida is way worse than Japan right now. But if you think that there are zero problems in Japan, you're wrong, number one. And number two, as I noted, there is a huge difference here, and that is an open-air building versus an indoor building with circulating air, which is what they're doing in Japan. One person, one person in a closed-air building with circulating air could, in fact, one, could spread COVID, okay? In an open-air building without circulating air? You could have three people in that building, and not one of the wrestlers or anybody is going to be affected by anybody there. They'll affect the people in their pod, but if they're all distanced from each other, there's very little chance of that happening. So, there is a big difference. Obviously, Florida is different from Japan, but it's also open air versus a closed building with circulating air. There's no perfect way to do this, everybody. There's no perfect way to do this. You know who's doing the best job of anybody? Is UFC with their bubble and everything. Go back and see how many people are getting pulled off cards on every show versus COVID. Or because of COVID. There's no way to do this safely. But if you're going to do it, you have to do your best. Back in a moment, Observer Live. 